The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 7th chapter, text number 1 through 3, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on September 10th, 1973, in Stockholm, Sweden. Maya Saptamana Partha Jogam Jinyan Madasya Asam Sang Samakrang Maam Jatha Gashasi Tatsino This is a verse from the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita which we have published Bhagavad Gita as it is. There are many editions of Bhagavad Gita, but uh, most of them, they have been edited to push forward the editor's own personal philosophical views. But uh, we do not accept Bhagavad Gita in that light. Bhagavad Gita is supposed to be spoken by the Supreme Personality of God. Therefore, it is stated here in Bhagavan was. Those who are Sanskrit scholars, they will understand uh, what is meant by the word Bhagavan. Bhagavan, Bhagavan means opulence, and one who possesses opulences, he is called Ban, the Bhutukpratta. Uh, from Bhutukpratta the word comes Ban. The Bhagavan means one who possesses all opulences. There are six kinds of opulences, uh, wealth, uh, I mean, uh, reputation, strength, knowledge, uh, renunciation, beauty, these are called opulences. If uh, one person is very rich, he is opulent, he attracts attention of many persons. Similarly, if one person is very influential, strong, he also attracts. Similarly, if one man is very famous for his activities, he also attracts attention. Similarly, if one man is very beautiful or a woman is very beautiful, he also or she attracts attention. If one is very wise, learned, he also attracts attention. These are called six opulences and these opulences are possessed by us in a small quantity. Every one of us may possess some riches, uh, maybe little wise or very, uh, not very strong, little strong, little, little quantity of these opulences are there in every person. But when you find a person that nobody possesses more than him, all these opulences, uh, the Sanskrit word is asama urdha. Asama means equally. And uh, sama means equally. And asama means without being equal. And urdha means above. Uh, when you find somebody uh, above him or equal to him, anyone else is as rich, as famous, as opulent, as wise, as beautiful, that person is called God. This is the definition of it. Uh, God is great means nobody is equal to him, nobody is above him. 
in any kinds of opulence. That is called Bhagavan. So here it is said, that there he writes, uh, this Bhagavad Gita is one of the chapter of uh, Mahabharata. Mahabharata means the history of Greater India. Uh, formerly, Bharat, India is given name by the Westerners, but real name is <coughs> Bharat, Bharat Bhars. This planet was formerly known as Ilavati Varsha, uh, and later on, after the emperor Bharat, this planet was known as Bharat Varsha. So Bharat Varsha means not only India, but the whole planet. Uh, at least five thousand years ago, it was known as Bharat Varsha. Uh, Bharat Varsha name is there, but it indicates only India. Uh, so, uh, in <coughs> this uh, Bhagavad Gita is a chapter of Mahabharata, or as you know, the book Mahabharata, uh, greater Bharat Varsha, uh, the history of the greater Bharat uh, that is Mahabharata. So the background of this Bhagavad Gita is that there was a worldwide fight, battle, called the uh, Battle of Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra, the place is still there. Uh, if some of you uh, went to India, might have seen it is near Delhi, New Delhi. The railway station is called also uh, Kurukshetra. So there was a battle five thousand years ago. Uh, the parties were two cousin brothers, and this Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna, uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. That what is called Bhagavan Ubhacha. Uh, so his teaching of John, uh, Bhakti Yoga. Uh, yoga means the means by which you can contact the Supreme. That is called yoga. Uh, another yoga means linking. So there are many types of yoga system for linking ourselves with the Supreme Absolute Truth. Uh, the Absolute Truth is realized in three phases, impersonal, localized and personal. Uh, in the Śrīmad Bhāgavatam it is said that the Absolute Truth is realized by different person according to different angle of vision. Uh, just like if you see from a distant place one mountain, you find something cloudy. If you go nearer, they you find it is something green. And if you enter actually the mountain, then you find there are so many varieties. There are trees, there are houses, there are living entities, animals, everything. The object is one, but according to the vision of the person uh, uh, from um, uh, length of distance, the same object is realized in different phases. Therefore, uh, the Bhagavata says, Badanti tattavidas tatyam jadgyanam adhyam. Uh, the object is one, but according to the understanding of the same one, somebody is realizing the Absolute Truth as impersonal Brahma, and somebody is realizing the Absolute Truth as localized Paramātmā, and somebody is realizing the same Absolute Truth as the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, <coughs> ultimately, the Absolute Truth is 
सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड है भगवान फॉल बैस देव दी कंपाइलर ऑफ महाभारत ही सेज श्री भगवान वाच चावर दिस कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस मूवमेंट द भगवान इज कॉल कृष्ण ही हैज कॉट मेनी मिलियंस ऑफ नेम बट कृष्ण नेम इज द चीफ कृष्ण नेम मीन्स द एट्रैक्टिवनेस ऑल एट्रैक्ट God must be all attract. It is not that God is attractive for one person, not for the other. No, God is attractive for all living entities. Uh, therefore, you see the picture of Krishna. He is loving the calves and cows. He is loving the trees. He is loving the gopis. He is loving the cowherd boy. Uh, for him, for God. Everyone is lovable object because everyone is son of God. That is stated in this Bhagavad Gita. Sarvo joni shukonte ya sammhavanti murta yoga. There are different species of life and different forms of life. Sarvo joni, as many forms are there. Krishna says, "Tasang mahat joni Brahma aham abhijya padapita." Their mother is this material nature, and I am the seed giving father. So, God is attractive for everyone, and God is equal to everyone. There is no distinction for God that here is an animal, here is a man, here is a tree. No, every living entity is part and parcel of God. That is our understanding. Of God consciousness or Krishna consciousness, so we are practicing this bhakti yoga. Amongst uh, there are different types of yoga system, as I have already explained, that God is realized as impersonal Brahma, as localized Paramatma, or the supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore, the process of linking with Him. It is called a yoga, and there are different processes of yoga system. Out of which three are principles: Jnana yoga, Hatha yoga, and Bhakti yoga. So Bhakti yoga is the topmost that is described in the Bhagavad Gita. Yogi naam api sarve saam madhvata antaratmana. सद्यावान भजते जुमांग समी जुक्त तमोमत। Of all the yogis, the yogis always thinking of Krishna with love and faith. It is not very difficult. Krishna says he is first class yogi. So how to become the first class yogi? That is described in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Krishna says personally, uh, if you want to understand God, it is better to understand from God Himself. Instead of speculating, what is God? Better to understand uh, God from the words of God. So Krishna is accepted by the <coughs> just like Vaishnav. Vaishnav. Is the compiler of all Vedic knowledge. He accepts Krishna, the supreme personality of God. Later on, all the acharyas, Ramanu Charya, <coughs> Madhya Charya, Vishnu Swami, Lord Caitanya, they have all accepted Krishna. So far, our Vedic culture is concerned, Krishna, the supreme personality of God. Here it is also said, Sri Bhagwan was. So he is teaching how to become first-class yogi in Krishna consciousness. That is his teaching. He is saying, "Maya sabta mana partha jogam jindan madasre." Me and to me, asabta attachment. The Krishna consciousness yoga means to increase the attachment for Krishna. 
That's all. We have got attachment for something, every one of us. Uh, so everyone has got attachment either for his family or either for some friend or for some house or from hobby or for some cats, for dogs. There is attachment. Uh, that is not to be learned. What is, we cannot, there is no need of explaining what is attachment. Attachment is there, uh, existing in everyone's heart. He wants to be attached to somebody else. Or he, everyone wants to love somebody else. Love does not mean oneness. Love must be two, the lover and the beloved. Uh, so attachment is there. That is natural. Everyone knows. Now, this yoga system, Krishna consciousness yoga system, means to increase your attachment for Krishna. That's all. Therefore it is said here, mayasaptamana prātha, increasing gradually the attachment for me, Krishna says, mayasaptamana prātha, yogaṁ jinyaṁ, practicing this yoga system, madāsraya, taking shelter of me. The madāsraya means two things. You can take directly shelter of Krishna, or he can take shelter of a person who has taken shelter of Krishna. That is meaning of Madhas. That is the system of parampara. Evang parampara prapam imagraja sevidu. If you increase your attachment for Krishna, that attachment, and if you increase your attachment for a person who is devotee of Krishna, it is the same. Ah, just like electricity, if one uh, thing is charged with the electricity power, if somebody touches it, he also becomes electrified. Ah, we have got daily experience that from the electric power house, the electric wires are distributed, and as soon as we join the plug, immediately it is electrified. Similarly, parampara system, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of God. The words given by Krishna, if you carry, and it is carried by other disciplic succession, then you are in touch with Krishna. That is called Yogam Junjan Madasa, always being linked up with Krishna. Maya Saptamana Pratha, Yogam Junjan Madasa, Asaṁsāṁ samagraṁ mā. Asaṁsāṁ means without doubt, and samagraṁ means in completeness. Asaṁsāṁ samagraṁ mā. Krishna says mā means the Supreme Personality of God. Asaṁsāṁ samagraṁ mā jathā gāsya-sī. As you can understand, please try to hear from me. Krishna is speaking. Personally. So if we accept Bhagavad Gita as it is, as instructed by Krishna Himself, then we understand what is God without any doubt, Asangsang and Samagram, incompleteness. Asangsang Samagram Ma, Jathagya Sasi Tatsanu. In our present position, with blunt material senses, with four defects, it is not possible to understand what is God. We have got four defects in this material condition. We commit mistakes, every one of us. We are illusioned. We accept something for something. So, commit mistake, illusion, and our senses are imperfect. The knowledge we gather through our senses, that is imperfect, because our senses are imperfect. Just like we see every day the sun with our eyes, but because our senses are imperfect, we see the sun like a disk, although it is fourteen hundred thousand times bigger than this are. In this way, if we analyze our senses, it will be found that our senses are 
imperfect, by the imperfect senses, speculating, and that is not perfect. Oh. Therefore, all these speculators, the so-called scientists, philosophers, they put forward theories. Perhaps it may be like that. Oh. That means it is not perfect knowledge. Oh. But if we receive knowledge from the supreme perfect God, then it is actually perfect. Uh, our process is like that. In the fourth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, you will find Krishna says, Evam parampara praptam imam raja sayubhiti. Evam vivasati yugam praktamana hamabhayam. Uh, Krishna said this philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, first to the sun God, and he spoke to his son, Manu, he spoke to his son, Ithaku, in this way, disciplic succession. Uh, this Bhagavad Gita has come down to this earthly planet, and, and if we accept that disciplic succession, do not unnecessarily interpret, then we understand what is Bhagavad Gita. That is the process. Our Krishna consciousness movement is to understand the Supreme Person, Krishna, uh, as He is, without any interpretation. Uh, that is called Krishna consciousness yoga. That can be achieved, as Krishna says, always keeping center Krishna. Maya sakta manaprata. Yogam jinyan madasya. Asang sang samagrangma. Jathagansasi tatsin. You can understand. If you practice this yoga, keeping Krishna in the center, and always thinking of Krishna, the form of the Krishna, then it will be revealed. Jasya devi para bhakti, jatha devi tatha guru. This is the yoga system of Krishna consciousness. So, <coughs> next verse he says, Jnanam tehaṁ sabhijñānaṁ idaṁ bhakṣāmi asesata jajgyatya neha bhūya annaj jñātabhaṁ avasiṣyate. I am speaking to you a process of knowledge. Jnanam. Jnanam means knowledge. Te and to you ahaṁ sabhijñāṁ. Sabhijñānaṁ means jnanam is theoretical. And vijñāna means practical, just like in scientific knowledge. The student has to pass both theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge. Theoretical combination of this chemical and that chemical makes this chemical, this is theoretical knowledge. But when you mix these two chemicals or three chemicals and produce that object, that is practical. Uh, recently, I may say, in California University, one learned professor came there to speak about the evolutionary theory of chemicals. And he said that life is produced, uh, perhaps you know, uh, from four chemicals. But when one st student, uh, he say that if I supply these four chemicals, whether you can produce life. In answer to this, he said, that I cannot say. That is imperfect knowledge. If you say life is produced from chemicals, then you must make experimental demonstration. By mixing those chemicals, you produce life. That is called vijyam. Practical, demonstration. Otherwise, it is not perfect. Uh, scientific knowledge means observation, then experiment. Uh, if you fail in an experiment, that is not scientific knowledge. It must be experimented. So here also it is said, jnanam uh, tehaṁ sabhijñāna. I am speaking to you this knowledge which you can practically experience. 
नॉट थियोरिटिकल सिंपली ज्ञान तेहं सभी ज्ञान इदम बक्षा अशेषत अशेषत मीन्स विदाउट एनी डिजर्वेशन एज फर एज पर्सन एज फर एज यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड आई एम एक्सप्लेन जज ज्ञात्या इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस न इह भूय अन्न ज्ञातव्यम ईश्यसते ज्ञातव्यम अवशिष्यते If you can understand this knowledge uh, with practical experience, then uh, yeah. there will there will be nothing to know anymore. That means your knowledge is complete, perfect. Uh, in the Veda, also it is stated that judge gatya just means vijnate is harvamidam vijnatam bhavanti. If you simply Try to understand what is God. Not try to understand. If you understand uh, scientifically what is God, then you understand everything. Because God is everything. Ah, uh, God is the central point of everything. That's why Imani Bhutani Dhan. They, these are the Vedic bhasans. From whom all these uh, material cosmic manifestation has come into being. And the Vedanta Sutta says, "Janma Dasya Jataha." Uh, the absolute truth is that from which everything has come down. Uh, so, if you understand the absolute truth, this means vidyate, sarva medam vidyatam bhavanti. Then you can understand all other departments of knowledge. Therefore, Krishna says that jnanam tehang sabigyanam idam bhokshami asesat. Uh, explicitly, elaborately, I am saying, just get that. Uh, if you understand, no iha in this world, uh, anna bhuya again, anna anything else, gyata bhama vasisyate. Uh, there is anything remains to understand. Everything is understood. Uh, uh. So, <coughs> Krishna says. Uh, मनुष्याण सहस्यु कश्चि जतति सिद्ध है जतताम की सिद्ध्या कश्चि मांग वृत्ति तत्व मनुष्याण सहस्य देर आर लिविंग एंटिटीज एट मिलियन फोर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड स्पीसीज और फॉर्म्स नाइन जलजान अवलखाने नाइन हंड्रेड थाउजेंड फॉर्म्स इन दी वाटर जलजान बुलखानी स्थावरा लोक विंशति टू मिलियन फॉर्म्स ऑफ द ट्रीज एंड प्लांट्स इन दिस वे दे आर आर अल्टोगेदर डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ लाइफ एट मिलियन फोर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड डोंट थिंक दैट द प्लांट्स एंड ट्रीज दे हैव नो लाइफ दे आर ऑल्सो लिविंग इन सिटीज वी डू नॉट एक्सेप्ट दिस थ्योरी That the animals have no soul. No, everyone has got soul. In the plants, trees, uh, everyone has got soul. They have got different bodies only. Uh, it is not that only human being has got the soul, not others. Uh, no, actually, if you have, uh, make analysis, what is the symptoms of possessing soul? You will find everywhere. Uh, even in plants, life you will find. Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose. Uh, one of the greatest scientists of the world, uh, he has proved by machine that when you cut the trees or the leaves, they feel sensation, pain, and that is recorded by machine. So everyone has got soul. Uh, therefore, Krishna says, "Sarva joni shukante or sammavanti nute tasang mahajani brahma aham bijapada." So here it is said. मनुष्याण सहस्यु कश्चि जतथि सिद्ध है देर आर मिलियंस एंड मिलियंस ह्यूमन बींग्स आउट ऑफ दैम वन इज वेरी मच एंडस हाउ टू गेट परफेक्शन ऑफ लाइफ बिकॉज एवरी वन इज कैरेड बाय द एनिमल प्रोपेन्सिटीज वॉट आर द एनिमल प्रोपेन्सिटीज ईटिंग स्लीपिंग सेक्स लाइफ एंड डिफेंस आहार निद्रा भयवैथुन सामान्य में तत्व सुधी नरा नाम 
These are the common formulas, uh, both to the animals and the human being. What is that? Eating, sleeping, mating, sex life, and defense. Defense. Uh, everyone is doing that according to his own capacity. Uh, cats and dogs, they also eat, they also sleep, they also have sex life, and they also try to defend when there is danger, when there is enemy. Uh, so these things have common formulas, both for the animals and human beings. But what is the special prerogative for the human being? That is uh, siddhi, how to make life perfect. Uh, that reality says, manusyanam sahasyesu kasya jatati siddhaya. Siddhaya means for perfection. What is the perfection of life? Perfection of life is no more births, no more deaths, no more disease, no more old age. That is perfect. That the people do not know. That there is possibility of attaining a stage when there is no more birth, no more death, no more old age. Uh, there are so many universities, so many educational institutions all over the world, uh, but nowhere there is department of understanding this science, how to stop birth, death, old age, and disease. Uh, in the chemical laboratory, they are trying to manufacture chemicals for stopping birth, contraceptive. Uh, but there is no uh, medicine that, mm. that uh, after taking this medicine or these chemicals, there will be no more death or no more birth, no more old age, and no more disease. Uh, you can manufacture chemical or uh, combination of medicine as counteracting the disease, just like in the Western country, the cancer disease. There are so many chemicals and medicines they are discovering, but uh, there is no medicine, no chemical which can say that no more cancer disease. Uh, that is not possible. So, actual siddhi means to overcome these four principles of miserable condition of life. That is perfect siddhi. Uh, John, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Janma mittu jarabhyadhi dukho doshanu darshan. Uh, everything is being attempted to suppress our miserable condition of life. That is going on. All advancement uh, of science, knowledge, philosophy, theology, anything. The idea is how to stop the miserable condition of life. Uh, but the real miserable condition of life, according to Bhagavad Gita, is birth, death, old age, and disease. Uh, don't go take seriously the side miserable condition. Uh, that's why people are very much anxious to uh, feed the hungry, uh, uh, the hungry man. Well, that you can do, that is nice business, but why don't you try? There, then, uh, that the hungry man and the well-fed man both will die. You cannot stop death. Either you feed him well or he is hungry. Death is there, as sure as death. The actual benefit is, if you can stop death, uh, that is actual benefit. Now our Krishna consciousness movement is uh, to stop death. Uh, he will be surprised, he may not be very much uh, pleased. But it is possible, it is possible, because we are eternal. We living entity soul, we are part and parcel of God. We are eternal. nitya sāsatayam na hannate hannamāne sarīve. These are the statements. First of all, we have to understand the constitutional position of ourselves, that is self-realization. Uh, our nature, we are eternal. We are not dying. When this body dies or annihilate, it does not mean I die. I exist. Just like my childhood body is no more existing, it is died. My youthhood body is no more existing. So, so many bodies I had in the past, they are no more existing. 
But I am existing. I remember. Therefore, I am eternal. So, Siddhi means when we seriously understand that I am eternal. So, why death is taking place? That is serious understanding of self realization. Therefore, Krishna says that Manusaram Sahasesu Kostim Jatati Siddhai. Siddhi means, perfection means to stop because I am eternal. Just like when you are diseased, your Siddhi, perfection means how to cure the disease, how to become healthy. That is your problem. Not that simply curing the disease, simply eating the medicine. No. The object is how to become in healthy condition. So our healthy condition is no more birth, no more death, no more old age, no more disease. That is healthy condition. So who is trying for that? No more is seriously educated on this point. And because one is not educated, he does not know that there is possibility, such possibilities, no more death, no more birth, no more disease. Therefore Krishna says, manusyanam sahasyesu, out of many, many millions of persons, just like our Krishna consciousness movement, we are trying to teach this perfection of life, how to become free from these four kinds of miserable conditions. Birth, death, old age, and disease. But how many are joining with us? Some of them are thinking these are fictitious. No, it is fact. It is scientific. It is scientific. But people have no interest in these things. They are simply interested in sense gratification. Nūnaṁ pramatta kurute vikarma. This is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. They have become mad, simply mad, to gratify senses. But they are forgetting that this human life is meant for making a solution for all the problems of life. They are not interested in that. They are thinking by increasing the volumes of sense gratification, that is perfection. That is not perfection. You may improve the material condition of life, but you cannot live here. Just like you are constructed, very nice city, Stockholm, or any European city. That is very good, but he will not be allowed to stay here. He will be kicked out at any moment. What is the solution for that? You construct a nice place, that's all right, very good. But you stay here, but you cannot stay. That is your problem. If you can solve that problem, yes, I have constructed a nice place, nice city, nice country, and everything is nice, but I will stay and enjoy, but that is not allowed. Then where is your perfection? This is the problem. So Krishna says that for manasarāṁ sahasyesu kaschit jatati siddhaye jatatāṁ api siddhyāna. There are many persons, they are trying to attain that perfection and stage of life by jñāna-yoga, dhāna-yoga or hata-yoga. There are many processes. But there is no system or there is system. But people are not interested. What is that system? Jatatamapi siddhanam kosid maana beti tattam. Nobody is trying to understand what is God. They are trying to understand so many things. But that will not solve their problems. But nobody is trying to understand God. Manishanam sahasyesu, out of many thousand, millions of persons, one may try to attain perfection of life, and out of such persons who are trying to attain perfection of life, some may understand what is God, what is Krishna. Therefore Krishna is trying to speak about Himself in the same chapter especially. So it is not possible to 
or describe all the verses, one or two, two three verses we can explain. Then he says, Bhumirapa analobayu khangamano buddhirivacha ahankaram ityang me bhinna prakriti astadha. Prakriti in nature. Now, first of all, we have to study uh, the material nature. Uh, just like the scientists, physicists, uh, chemists, they are trying to understand the material nature. So what is this material nature? The material nature is described here and eight varieties. Five varieties, gross, and three varieties, subtle. Uh, the five gross varieties are the bhumi. Bhumi means this earth. Uh, Upper the water. Uh, bhumi upper anala, the fire. Bhumi upper anala by the air. And uh, bhumi upper anala by you, khang. Khang means the sky, ether. Then mana, mind. Then buddhi, intelligence. Uh, ahankara. Then self-consciousness. Uh, uh, I am. I am. I am American, I am Englishman, I am Swedish, and this, this, I consciousness. So these are eight. Uh, earth, water, fire, air, sky, mind, intelligence, and I consciousness. These are material eight elements. Mind is also material. Intelligence is material. So there is cultivation of knowledge of the gross material. Uh, the, that's like soil export. There are trying to understand the earth, where there is mind, where there is something, something. That is analyzing the earth. Uh, similarly, somebody is studying the light or uh, the air, and they are all material things. There is no spiritual understanding. So, Bhumi, Rapanala, Bhagu, Khangamana, mind, psychologist. Uh, they are also studying the mind, the activities, thinking, feeling, and willing, and their varieties. That is also material. Uh, and ethereal uh, understanding, so many things are going on. But they are all material, Krishna says. Bhumi, rapa, anala, vayu, khanga, mana, buddhi, evacha, ahankara, ityangme, prakriti, asadha. Uh, Krishna is claiming they are my manifestation of energy. Uh, so there is connection of Krishna with this earth, water, physical science. But we do not know Krishna. Uh, we simply studying externally. That's in medical science. He is studying the external body. But within the body there is a spiritual spark, soul. He does not know that. Dehinasmin jatha dehi kaumana jovanam jara tatha dehantram prati dhirasvatanam yati. Who is uh, accepting another body? Uh, the Darwin's theory is that the body is changing to another body. That is nonsense. That is not the fact. The soul is transmigrating from one body to another. That is knowledge. Uh, this is fact. Uh, so we can discuss if it is needed. But um, this is the path. There is the soul. Uh, and these eight elements, material elements, they are outer covering. That you have got, as you have got shirt and coat. Uh, the shirt is the inner covering, the coat is the outer covering. Similarly, the body made of earth, water, air, fire, this lump of matter is nothing but uh, distribution of the material elements. Uh, just like we uh, make some machine uh, by uh, manipulating the material elements. This is also just like a machine. Uh, and it is stated here in the Bhagavad Gita, Jantra Rurhani Maya. Uh, we have been given this machine to uh, move. Uh, uh, by whom it is given? By Maya, by the illusory energy. Ishara Sarvabhutanam Riddesha Arjuna Tishthati Brahman Sarvabhutani Jantra Rurhani Maya. We are given a certain type of machine, 
certain type of body according to our desire, and we are moving. Just like if you have got a car, we can move from here to there. Similarly, by this body we are moving, not only within this planet, but sometimes in other planet also, but within the universe. With this material body we can move within the universe, material world. That if we want to go to the spiritual world, there is another universe, the spiritual world, then we have to uh, get rid from this material uh, engagement and transfer ourselves in the spiritual body, in the spiritual world. Then we get uh, actually eternal life, uh, blissful life, full of knowledge. That is our Krishna consciousness moment. Uh, so we request you to read our books. We have got many volumes of books, uh, but we are giving information to the people of the world that you can get out of this entanglement of birth, death, old age and disease and be transferred to the spiritual world where you can live eternally with peaceful uh, life and full of knowledge. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Spiritual thinking can be used to cure bodily sickness. Yes. Uh, that is not very difficult to understand. Just like a living man and a dead man. Living man means the body is carrying the spirit soul. And dead man means the body is there, but there is no spirit soul. But as soon as the body is dead, or the spirit soul is out of it, immediately it begins to decompose. The same body, as long as carrying the soul, there is no such thing. Therefore, if you keep your body spiritualized, then there is no question of uh, decomposition or disease. We have to get another example, just like if you take an iron rod and put it into the fire, it becomes warm, warmer, and at the end it becomes red hot. When it is red hot, it is no more iron rod, but it is fire. It touches iron rod, red hot, any place it will burn. Similarly, if you make your body spiritualized by Krishna consciousness, then there is no question of belief. It's a question to your father to read uh, verses from the Sanskrit and the second chapter, verse 8 and 5 verses on it. Mm, fine. Okay. Uh, what is that? Mass number? Number 10, sir. What is the reading? This is uh, number 11, while speaking the words. 11? Yes. Yeah. Sri yeah. Bhagavan Ubhacha, Asachyan Annasutastam Pragyabhadam Subhasasvi, Gatasun Agatasun Sa Nanu Suchanti Pandita. The translation is, the blessed Lord said, when speaking learned words, he... Uh, Arjuna accepted Krishna as the spiritual master. Uh, first of all, he was talking just like friends. But when he saw that by friendly talkings, the uh, problem which, is, which was present before that cannot be solved. Therefore, he accepted Krishna as the spiritual master. And uh, the spiritual master Krishna, first of all, chastise him in this way, the asuchyan anusuchasthan. You are lamenting on the subject matter uh, which is not object of lamentation. Asuchyan. Asuchyan anusuchasthan pragyama. But you are talking like a very learned scholar. So, uh, she mildly rebuked him that this kind of lamentation is not done by Pandita, by Lani scholar. That means you are rascal number one. You are fool. 
You are talking like learned scholar, but you are a fool. Indirectly he says that gatasun or gatasun is nanu sochanti pandita. Pandita. Those persons who know, uh, just like this body. Uh, pandita, those who are learned scholars, they know that this body is the uh, lump of matter. Just like a nice Rolls Royce car. It is very nice car, very valuable car, but it is after all a lump of matter. The car is important so long the driver is there. Otherwise it is lump of matter. So those who are fools, suppose if there is accident in the car, ah, they become being like, oh, I am lost, I am lost. So what you are lost? You are not this car. You are not this car. Huh? You get another car. Where is the cause of lamentation? That is being told. Why you are lamenting this body? The body is not the object of lamentation. Either it is living or dead. It is a lump of matter. This is the meaning. Mm-hmm. Next verse. Ah. Next verse is, Natu evaham jatu nasam naptang nimi janadhipa. Nacheiva na bhavishyama sarvivayam ataparam. He explained that uh, I, you, and all these persons, the kings and the soldiers who have assembled here, it is not that they were not existing previously. They were existing as individual souls or as I am also individual God, and you all people individual souls, we are existing in the past. We are now existing. I am existing, you are existing, the soldiers and other things there. And in the future also we shall exist. The body may change. Just like in the past we are existing, the body has changed now. Similarly, at present also, when this body will be changed, we will exist in another body. So what is the cause of lamentation? Oh, this is the transition. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you. That means you existed, I existed. And all of them existed. Because we are eternal. This is the point. We are soul, we are not this body. Just like in childhood I existed. In my boyhood I existed. In my youthhood I existed, and now I am existing. Therefore the right conclusion is, when this body will not exist, I will exist in another body. So one should not lament for the, the lump of matter. One should be serious to understand what is that non-ever-existing eternal thing. So that is education. Superficially, we are overwhelmed with this external body. That is ignorance. We should be serious to understand what is that eternal thing which is existing within this body. We see that this foundation is a Christian foundation. And then um, I wonder what, what is your personal opinion about the uh, main picture in the Gospel, the Jesus Christ. I do not know much about him. What is that? You know? Anybody knows? Uh, the, the main picture of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, what is, it? Oh, what is your opinion about his main teaching? Yes, yeah, but main teaching so far we read Bible. Uh, Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt not kill. But there you are, everyone is killing, that's all. The first commandment is violated. It is clearly said, Thou shalt not kill. But when I ask any Christian why you are killing, he cannot give me a satisfactory answer. Not the because we we are we are offer our all respect to Jesus Christ. Yes. We call Lord. 
we offer our sincere respects to him. That is all right. Uh, his teaching is all right. Uh, he gives you the message of God. Uh, we are doing the same thing. So therefore he is bona fide. Uh, anyone is spreading the knowledge of God, he is bona fide, representative of God. So that we admit. But unfortunately his instructions are not being followed. That is our lamentation. Otherwise it is very nice. Eight million four hundred thousand of life, which man has to evolve through. Yes. Um, a spiritual being having entered or take the way of man, can he ever again reincarnate in the world, in the kingdom, in the kingdom of animals? Yes. Uh, what happens to his consciousness, which he has achieved as a man? You will let time which is in the animal kingdom. Yes, consciousness is according to the body. Just like when you are a child, your consciousness was different because you had a different body. In your childhood, you might have talked so many nonsense things. Your father and mother did not care. He is a child. But if you talk, such nonsense things now, then he will be differently considered. The body is different. So consciousness is there according to different types of body. So in this human form of body, we have got our consciousness very developed. Now we should utilize this consciousness to understand what is God, what is our relationship with God, and act accordingly. Then we become perfect. But if we do not take advantage of this human form of life, we keep our dog's consciousness, eating, sleeping, mating only. And then you do not know what kind of body you are going to get next. Uh, get me a human body. Not only human body, you are getting the, uh, you have got already the spiritual body. Now it is covered by this material body. So if you develop your Krishna consciousness, then you are not going to be covered by material body again. You keep in your spiritual body. So that in spiritual body you go to the spiritual world and live with Krishna. That is the highest perfection. Meeting hmm. you here now would make sure that he will get a human form in his next life. Yes, if, if you are in Krishna consciousness, even though you cannot finish it uh, uh, properly, still you get the chance of getting a human, a higher standard human form. That is stated in the Bhagavad. Suchinam Simatan Gehe Yoga Bhrashta Sanjayat. One who could not finish this yoga system of Krishna consciousness, he gets his life again as a human being in very rich family, all in a very pure family. So at least human body is guaranteed. Even one fails to complete the Krishna consciousness. Because he gets another chance. Uh, to get birth in a rich family means he has no economic problem. He can completely engage himself to understand what is God. But people are not doing that. As soon as he gets birth in a rich family, he thinks that for nothing I've got so much money. Let me engage in sense gratification. No guide. Otherwise, this is a chance. Similarly, in a pure Brahmin family also, the family is already enlightened, uh, just like uh, the children of our students. From the very beginning, they are getting chance to understand Krishna. There is a very good chance from childhood. 